All right, so this is prepping out your post. I've got half inch backer rod. I've got Johnson & Johnson, Zonus, or Coach tape, some sort of tape to wrap the backer rod in, and some duct tape. I've already measured my puppy's ears. I know I took a measurement off my hand that his ears go from here to a little past my fingertips, so that's what I'm gonna use. The post is better a little bit long than short because we can always trim it. So I'm gonna trim down. Again, half inch backer rod, I'm gonna make two posts. Okay, first thing I'm gonna do is reinforce my backer rod with duct tape. This is a nylon reinforced duct tape, any old duct tape will do. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to lay the duct tape down. I'm gonna make sure I leave a small end here that's gonna actually go into the ear. I'm gonna lay this down long ways, nice and straight, and then trim off the duct tape. I'm gonna roll this really, really flat. Any wrinkles in this could cause irritation inside your puppy's ears, much like a wrinkled sock would irritate your foot inside your shoe. So I'm gonna roll this so it's nice and flat. And I'm gonna do this with two layers of duct tape just for some extra stiffness. Okay, so two layers, same thing, no wrinkles, no creases. It would drive you crazy inside your shoe. It's going to drive them crazy inside their ear. So I'm going to roll that that way. And roll this out. So I'm going to make both of these at the same time. And go from there. So very, very straight. If your backer, if your post is messed up, throw it out and start over. Backer rod is cheap. Again, trim out. This is going to get trimmed down, so if it's long, it really doesn't matter right now. Nice and straight. All right. First layer. And now the second layer. post is reinforced now. What I'm going to do is cut a 45 degree angle on the end of this so it sits down in the puppy's ear nicely. You can see a little 45. So you got this nice 45 on there. I'm going to do that for both of them and that's going to help be more comfortable for the puppy. Okay, so those are wrapped and prepped. Next is the back wrapping. Back wrapping can be done with um, Zonus tape, coach tape, Johnson Johnson tape. It's not quite as specific because it's inside. When you're doing this, it's really important to make sure that you cut a 45 on this as well. So when you back wrap it, sticky side out, you have no blisters, wrinkles, anything like that. So this is how the back wrapping. Again, the sticky side is outside right now. And I'm gonna very, very carefully twist this Make sure it overlaps just a little bit. Doesn't have to be a huge amount. And then very carefully wrap this. Again, any wrinkles, start over. Wrinkles will cause blisters. So that almost wrinkled, I straightened it out, so I saved this piece. So I'm gonna roll this very carefully to be wrinkle free sticky side out. They call this back wrapping. Again, exactly the tape you use is not quite as critical for the back wrapping. We're going to do this for each of the posts. Keeping everything very straight, very wrinkle free, which is going to be much more comfortable for a little puppy. So wrap all this up. We do this for each post. So now you have a sticky post that you're going to put in the puppy's ear when it's time to do that. You can prep these posts out. My puppy is currently sleeping in the other room, so I'd much rather do this when the puppy is not running around like a crazy man. So I'm going to trim this off. 
I always just twist the end to keep everything tight. Just get rid of that because I don't need that. So now I have a sticky post, half inch backer rod, reinforced with duct tape, back wrapped. I have Johnson & Johnson coach tape. So I'm going to put that aside, make sure it doesn't stick to my table. And then we will have two posts prepped to go into my puppy's ears. And then I will wake the puppy up and that will be the next video. All right, so we have our posts all prepped out now. We have two back wrapped posts, half inch backer rod. And now I just woke up my puppy who is nice and tired. We always post at night because the puppies are much more compliant when they're sleepy. So he's got old posts on here. I use Gore-Tex um, for my exterior. So I'm gonna take off the bridge first. I'm just gonna simply snip the bridge out. So there's less flopping around here. And then I'm gonna start unwrapping. So I may be able to avoid Unisolve. Sometimes you can, sometimes you can't. Here it looks like I'm gonna need to use a little bit of Unisolve just to loosen this up. I use sewing scissors because they are very skinny and they are very sharp. And I put puppy on a chair so he can't escape. So I slip the scissors underneath where I can't get his ear. And then I usually will go up the back inside edge of the ear where I can see I'm not gonna get him by accident, but I can clip away the old posting. So the Gore-Tex has no adhesive, which is very, very convenient when it comes to removing it. And again, a sleepy puppy is a far, far easier puppy to work on. Okay, so we have sleepy puppy. This is general. Okay, so now we've got the exterior. Now I'm gonna pull this out of here. That was seated really deep into the bell, which is exactly what you want. Not a ton of tape residue. And this is actually his first post we're pulling right now. Okay. Okay. And we have ears. Look at that. First post. We got a pretty good looking ear. That looks great. Okay, so there's the first post. You can see the bottom of it. It is kind of gross. This has only been in for 48 hours. Okay. So we're going to take a little bit of a paper towel, a little bit of witch hazel clean off any of those yucky yucky things that are in there there's usually yucky stuff in the fold the natural fold of the ear so you want to get those yucky things out of there very pretty little boy you want to make sure there's no yucky stuff down in the bell of the ear because that'll get trapped down in there we don't want that uh, baby wipes are great for this baby wipes are nice and gentle and also little Q-tips. And I also actually really like this stuff. Zymox OTIC with hydrocortisone. It's frequently used if you get an ear infection, but this I kind of use preventatively. I put a little down in the bottom. It's nice and gentle. Smush it around for a second and then wipe it out and let it dry up. Okay, so we're gonna get any little ear boogies out of there. Not too bad, most of them are stuck on the post. I know, puppy. I know. It's not nice sticking fingers down in your tiny little ear. But because you're tired, you're being a very good boy. Okay, I'm gonna use Q-tips to make sure there's nothing left in there. And if you smell any odor, you pull those posts immediately. You do not want any any odor in your post. Okay, so his ear looks really nice. He's gonna get a nice little treat. You know, a little treat. That's a good boy. That's a good boy. Okay, we already have an ear that's up. That's after 48 hours of posting, and he's 10 weeks old, and this is a very long show crop. So I'm going to do exactly the same thing on the other side. Come on, buddy. We're going to go this way. I usually, again, go up the back of the ear where I can see exactly what's going on, and that I'm not trimming or clipping him or hurting him in any way. Do not want to hurt our little boy here. Yes, you're a very wiggly child. There we go. So now I can see just a little better. Yes, you're very cute. Very cute. OK, 
Okay, if you hold still, you'll keep getting little treats, okay? Hey, hold on, buddy. Now <laughs> you're looking for treats. Hold on. Okay, again, very, very careful. Skinny scissors. And I can see up the back of the ear exactly where I'm cutting, especially with the Gore-Tex, because it's kind of see-through almost. Okay, so the whole back is opened up now. Yes. Hey. Hey. You're doing good. That's a good little boy. Thank you. All right. So I'm going to pull this one out now. Because I didn't use heavy-duty guard, uh, heavy-duty tape or any tour box, I can kind of just peel this right out of here. All right. Just gently peel it out. Okay, again. More little boogers. Hey. Do we have ears already? Do we have ears on a little tiny boy? Yes, yes we do. That looks great. Good job. That's a good little guy. Alright, so I'm going to clean out that other ear. And then I'll show you how we put the new post in. Alright, so we have cleaned ears. Right, we have cleaned ears. We gave the puppy lots of treats. He's nice and tired. So he's being very good, right? Your sleepy little puppy, that's good. Sleepy puppies are easy to work with. He's sitting on a chair so he doesn't do anything dumb. We built our posts. I've actually already cut down lengths of Gore-Tex, which is the fingertip tape that I like to use. You can use um, coach tape, no elastic anything, absolutely no um, cute, fancy vet wrap that will kill ears in 12 hours, 24 hours, it's it's not worth it. All right, so we've already cleaned everything out. He's a nice, happy boy. So we're gonna start posting now. So uh, we know that these are too long, we will trim these. So what we're gonna do is we are going to pop out the side of this bell a little bit, and we're gonna twist this all the way down into the bottom. It's not gonna get into his ear canal because his ear canal goes into his head horizontally. But this is going to go all the way into the belt, and we're going to put, we're going to stretch this ear up onto this post. And I'm going to hold it because he's going to try to wiggle his little head. Okay? Yeah, I saw that. So I'm going to hold that. I'm going to take my first strip of Gore-Tex, and I'm going to go on an angle from the bottom around. I'm going to fold in his natural curve, the natural fold that should be on the ear. Yes, I know you're making noises, and I'm not tightly doing this, but I'm doing this just enough. So it holds. So we go around the bottom, and we do this from the inside around. I'll trim off the excess. Inside around as we fold that crease in. Yes, I know. It's very cute. You're adorable. Thank you. Nope. So we go inside, we stick it to the white tape, we go around, and until we cover the entire ear. We do not want any exposed ear because exposed ear can be hurt. They use these like bull horns. I'm trimming off the excess, excuse me, because I don't want lots of layers on here because that just cuts off the uh, air supply. You don't get good ventilation out. We just stop. We just stop. Don't be a booger. No, no, don't eat that. Okay, so now I'm just going to squish this on because I didn't put it on tight. So I'm just going to squeeze. And yes, I know this is too tall. That's fine. We made sure it went all the way into the bottom. The bottom's actually right there. You can see it's very, very far into the ear. And this will trim off the extra in a minute. So I'm going to make sure I have enough guard text lined up for my other ear. Yes, sweetie. I know. It's very wiggly. No, we're not going to itch it. We're going to leave it alone. We're going to give you a little tiny treat. Hey. Oh, little treats. Treats make it all better. Okay, so I'm going to do the other ear next. Okay, same thing. Pop out the bottom, all the way in the bottom. Again, we're not in danger of going into the ear canal. Stretch the ear all the way up onto the post, and then immediately start wrapping, because he will start shaking his little head as soon as possible. Because he's not used to this process yet. Okay, you're going to lay it on there gently. We are not going to make anything snug. Snug is dangerous. So from the inside around, inside around, all the way up. 
Okay, hold still, puppy. Hold still. We don't want to layer this up too much. We want it to just gently overlap the one next to it so it has good breathability. Nobody would want this layers and layers and layers of stuff on them. Good. And it looks like I'm going to need maybe one more piece to cover the entire ear. So I've got my Gore-Tex hanging out. One more little piece. Perfect. Okay. Keep in mind if this isn't perfect, you're going to redo it very shortly anyway. When we first start posting, every two or three days is great. After a couple of months, if you get four, five, six, you're doing good. All right, so I've got two very long posts on this little puppy. I'm going to grab a piece of my coach tape or whatever, whatever regular sticky tape we're using. It doesn't have to be long. I'm actually going to tear it down the, s down the middle because I'm actually going to use this as a little stopper. Okay, I'll stop, buddy. I'll stop, you're okay. So I'm going to put my finger over the tip of this puppy's ear so I do not clip his ear. I clip the end of this post off. I'm going to make sure this stays all the way down. I'm going to cover this so it doesn't try to spring out of there like a jack-in-the-box. Okay? So now the post is the right length for this little puppy's ear. This is what I cut off. Same thing. I'm going to cover his ear with my thumb so I cannot possibly nip him. Make sure this is pushed down so it doesn't spring out. And put this over the tip. I'm actually not covering the ear portion, I'm covering the post portion. Squish, 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 squish. There you go. You look very cute. Like a little blue bowl. There you go. Get a little squish. All right. All right, so that's entering the post. Next will be the bridge. All right, so the final part is gonna be the bridge. So I've got my backer rod. I have to figure out how far apart we want these ears. We want to point at 11 and 1 on a clock face. So I've got to figure out how long that bridge needs to be in order to achieve that. So I'm going to cut a little long and then trim it down until I get the desired length. Okay, sit down, puppy. Sit down, John. Good boy. So a lot of the time I like to stand behind the dog and kind of angle everything up. This bridge is maybe a little bit too long. So I'm going to trim it down by just a smidge. And that'll probably be perfect. Okay, so again, there's that bridge. On young puppies, you don't need to reinforce the bridge. Older puppies, you may want to actually wrap this in duct tape just to make it a little stronger because they're they're kind of crazy. Okay, so I've got puppy's head here. I'm looking at him from right behind his head, and I'm getting the angles correct, and I'm happy with that. So I'm going to take one very long piece of tape. It's going to go all the way around everything, and then. I'm going to center the bridge in that very long piece of tape. Nope. Sit down, puppy. Sit down, General. No, no, no. Don't eat the tape. No, it's not a snack. Thank you. Okay, I'm going to center that in there. Cut my very, very long piece of tape. Uh, this, again, must be breathable because it is going to layer over the ears. So now I've got my very, very long piece of tape. Hey, little boy. Come here. This is usually the hardest part for a lot of people, but again, you're going to be redoing this about a million times. So if you don't get the angles perfect this time, get it next time. Okay, so I try to do this from behind. I always, I always like to lift the puppy's ears up into location as I put the bridge on. And also spin them because the ears do rotate. We want to make sure that they rotate at the same angle. Okay, so lift the ear up. Make sure the bridge is where we want it and then tape around. Sometimes this is the part that takes probably more practice than anything, is getting good bridging. Okay, so I like that. I'm going to lift this ear up as well to match so I get a nice angle, as long as everything is just the same, and go around. Okay, so now I've got this kind of messy bridge right now. Seeing this all these little edges, I'm going to take another piece of tape on each side and just wrap it around as reinforcement and that's it we're done then so I'll just show you the last tiny little step okay, so this I usually go under the head under the bridge by the head wrap it around just so the bridge can't unravel itself they love to use their post as battering rams 
crash into things, go running through the bushes, playing in the curtains. So this will help keep everything together and safe. Okay, hold on, buddy. Last step. Just squish that on there. Oh, I know. Okay. Hey. There you go. That looks pretty good. So again, his bridge is not falling too far forward because I lifted his ears onto the bridge and it's not falling too far back and it's not going to be uncomfortable. So he's, his ears have got a lot of breathability with the Gore-Tex. Everything's down nice and deep. And you can see he's pretty compliant because he's nice and tired. He's got a little treat. He's tired. He's on a chair. That's probably your best bet. And again, it's going to be a practice type thing. You're going to redo this about a million times. Sometimes it'll last one day. Sometimes you'll get more. But don't beat yourself up if they're not perfect each and every post.